Hey guys, we're here on the beautiful Lake Proserpine fishing with Rod Harrison. Now I've got Harrow here, he's going to uh, give you a little bit of a rundown on his famous bionic braid and uh, why it's the number one super one. Thanks uh, Matt, uh, firstly uh, great to be out with you blokes, uh, been fans of mine or no, I've been fans of you, well, let me reverse that for a long time, you epitomise <laughs> loyalty. Ten years with Wilsons uh, and you really give your, your sponsors value which uh, you can't can't say that for a lot of the go-getters around uh, these days yeah bionic uh, it's the longest established uh, super line if you want to call it that uh, goes right back to the birth of braids at the time i was fly fishing in mexico for striped marlin and some of the blokes had this line they called a japanese kite line and they were filling their reels and getting as extraordinary amounts of backing, double the backing which you need for a hot fish like a striped marlin. So bonefish fly reels all of a sudden became billfish capable. So I uh, made some inquiries and uh, yeah, I found out yeah, the Japs were initially making it for flying kites, uh, kites that uh, touch the moon or hit Jupiter or whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, I dug a little bit further and um, I had a very fortuitous, fortuitous uh, experience uh, working the show circuit in the States at uh, firstly at San Mateo near San Francisco and then San, um, oh, San Antonio in Texas and that was the launch of Spiderwire. Oh. Uh, Spiderwire Mark I was a very loose weave braid but it had extraordinary uh, strength to diameter qualities and all the other attendant uh, advantages of braid. So after that I was over in Europe uh, working at the, I was doing a lot of the show stuff then for an American company at the Amsterdam uh, tackle show and I ran into Don McPherson. Don and I have been mates for many many years and I said hell Don you on a on a, one of those sort of tours or what? Amsterdam is a pretty easy city, you know, people are tugging your back of your shirt wanting to sell you uh, <laughs> uh, drugs and if you want to throw the leg, well you can do that pretty <laughs> easily. Any, anyway, uh, he said, no, I'm looking for this new material that uh, uh, the Dutch make. Um, a mob, a Dutch company is making a, a stuff called gel spun polyethylene. And that's the raw material they make braids out of. I said, well, look, why don't we, you know, and he suggested to me, I suggested to back him. I said, well, well, get back to Australia. Let's sort of do it. I've got some of this new stuff. It's good, but it's not, it's got lots of uh, areas where it can be improved. So we messed around and uh, I came up with the name Bionic Braid. Uh, the Australian Monofil uh, company in, in Brendale, Brisbane, which uh, Don has uh, was their head then. Don's an industrial chemist by occupation and a bloody good fisherman. I've shared boats in a lot of places. We've slept on the sands of the Sahara, the bloody floor, jungle floor of the Amazon and he's always been up to it. I you know, love Don, miss him dearly. And anyway, uh, <clears throat> we messed around with various combinations. Uh, so we found by using an eight carrier, that's eight strands in the, in the, in the mix, and giving it an eight pick weave, that's the tightness of a concert weave with a concertina ring, we actually got a serendipitous 8% stretch. And we killed, a, we lined the ducks up on that one, we killed a bloody lot of them. And anyway, the pink uh, came in, I said, well, again, you look, let's get something and you see a bloody reel, you know, pink on it, pink underwear, wow. It's an instant ad. Of course, it, the, the, the recipe and the color and that's been much copied uh, since but this was the first the, the world's first eight pick eight carrier eight percent stretch uh, super line I guess the first in this color the color apart from the, the uh, recognition factor on, on reels and uh, uh, you know the situation awareness where the in low light you can see where the cast is going yep. and of course it's beyond the vision register of a lot of fish particularly blue water game fish uh, they see pink as a shade of grey you catch a snapper or a red emperor bring it up it's red go down 50 or 60 feet have a look at it it's grey right. so that's a thing and of course my 
mate Dean Butler, Dean's one of the best anglers and a, and a true friend. Uh, him and Tom Evans, they set a shitload of bloody world fly, billfish on fly records and Dean's probably still got the first loads of bionic uh, he put on his reel back in the 90s. This came into inception about the mid 90s, hasn't changed since. People go on about the price, yeah, that's, that's, that's a problem. See what happens, the lower the denier, denier, the finer the denier of the raw yarn that goes into it, the more it costs. So most braids are four and five carrier, and therefore cheaper to manufacture than an eight carrier. And of course the suppliers of the raw yarn uh, adjust your price on your previous order, so the big boys sort of dominate the market. And then they throw all sorts of advertising blurb, it won't break at the knot, that's bullshit. Uh, if that happens there's something, there's a yeah. defect somewhere yep. in the line. It won't do this, but they're talking about all this advertising blurb. The, more of the, the, the majority of braids uh, brands on the market are the, the product of marketing companies. They send a specification into a company, and there's only half a dozen in the world, make me this sort of braid, blah, 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 this colour, this mix, da, da, da. Uh, so the low carrier braids are cheaper to make than an eight carrier. And of course the other bullshit they're talking about, about not strength and absorption, uh, crike, you know, the whole gamut. Yep. They're talking about the mortar and not the bricks. Yep. So, uh, you know, at the, at the end of the day... Uh, you get what you pay for. You get, what you, you, pay get for. what you pay for. And this will, it stood the test of time, it will outlast. And how long have you had it on reels? Well, now? you first filled one up for me about 10 years ago for the 30 pound braid. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I've still got it today. It loses its colour, it's lost a little bit of its colour up high. You know, it gets yeah. that uh, palely whitey, but the, the string, I, I can still go and catch just as many fish on it, the knots it won't, it's, it's, it's still like it, it was 10 years ago. Yeah, well, see, the, 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 the raw material is impervious to any chemical intrusion. So it'll take a colour, but it's skin deep, yep. and in time that will leach out. Yeah. But there's no loss in tensile strength. The secret is in the in the eight uh, pick weave, uh, the eight carrier uh, construction, and that gives a nice round format, which uh, outwears the the others, you know. And uh, uh, very very proud of this product, and it has. Uh, it has, it's remained unchanged since the mid-90s. Haven't had uh, to change it? No, right. no. But, but of course, you know, the, the, the uh, media is bombarded by advertising oh. uh, about, about braids. But if you look into it, read between the lines, really know about the product, uh, it does not stack up. Yeah, no, it's, as I said, we've, we've, we've spilled all of our stuff with it for, for a very long time now for that... Uh, day ten years ago, to Wongi has first pulled up my reel, and uh, yeah, we'll continue to use it for as long as it long as it exists. It, it, it really is, uh, the, yeah, one of the best. So. I appreciate the support and uh, thanks for the uh, time in, in your boat. A pleasure fishing with you, blokes. No worries at all. Let's go and uh, let's go and bank some barra. <laughs> uh, we will. <laughs>